Gorehounds agree it's a great time to be a horror fan. And though 2020 promises its fair share of dark delights, it'd be a shame if you missed any of the macabre horror highlights of 2019. Prepare to scream. Ooh, scary movie. The wide open spaces of the American frontier are often romanticized by classic westerns, but the wind recognizes the terror and existential dread at the heart of those vast, desolate lands. The debut film from director Emma Tammy follows a tough frontiers woman named Lizzie, played by Catelyn Gerard. She's clearly haunted by all the emptiness that surrounds her, not to mention the ever-present chilling wind howling across the plains. Despite reassurances from her husband, Lizzie becomes increasingly convinced that some sort of demonic presence is tormenting her. But is something supernatural really to blame, or is the root of all her horror simply loneliness? It's a question that's bound to haunt anyone who braves this atmospheric slow burn of a horror film. The Hole in the Ground is a thoroughly unnerving movie. In his feature film debut, Irish writer and director Lee Cronin tells the story of a mother and son hoping to escape their troubled past by moving to a remote countryside village. Needless to say, trouble eventually finds them there, too. Mom, look out! It's not your boy. There's something quite disturbing about their new home, especially that enormous sinkhole in the nearby woods. The boy's inevitable encounter with the titular hole in the ground leaves his mother feeling rather uneasy, and rightfully so. Sure, there's no shortage of horror films with creepy kids running amok, but Cronin handles the material in a way that feels both modern and fresh. As The Guardian writes in its glowing review, the hole in the ground always finds new, invariably cinematic ways to nudge us toward its final leap into the abyss. Cronin feels like a real find for our especially insecure moment. A horror movie doesn't need to take itself seriously in order to be great. Take Crawl, for example. This throwback creature feature stars a bunch of killer alligators chasing a father and his daughter after their Florida home is flooded in a Category 5 hurricane. No, it's not a particularly sophisticated premise, and that's part of what makes the film so great. Critics wholeheartedly agree, with Slate writing that, it's fast, efficient, crisply directed, and delivers on the promised alligator thrills. Those B-movie values feel especially refreshing. It seems like a straightforward revenge thriller at first, but the perfection has all sorts of tricks up its sleeve, and it takes some extremely dark turns as it hops wildly from genre to genre. Is it a body horror film, a psychological thriller? It's both, and a jet black comedy to boot. The perfection also happens to be preposterously gross, and yes, that's a ringing endorsement. The film involves Charlotte, a former musical prodigy played by Allison Williams. You already suspect she's up to no good when she seduces the school's current lead cellist, Elizabeth, played to perfection by Logan Browning. Or am I the luckiest man in the world? I don't even drink, and I feel giddy drunk. My two most perfect students together. Before you know it, the film morphs into a sadistic, gore-smeared spectacle that's full of nasty surprises. Adventurous critics were quick to praise the film, with Rolling Stone commenting that, in its own blood-splattered, limb-lopping way, it may be a particularly perfect thriller for this moment. Ready or Not got a bit lost in the shuffle when it hit theaters in summer 2019, and that's really too bad. This well-crafted horror film is a black comedy and slasher flick rolled into one, and it really deserves to be seen. At every turn, Ready or Not manages to be funny, intelligent, and incredibly well-acted. The premise centers around a young woman named Grace, played by Samara Weaving. She's forced to play a deadly game of hide-and-seek upon marrying into a wealthy and highly eccentric family. As it turns out, that family evidently signed a deal with the devil several years back, and the pact requires that they sacrifice a newly joined member of the clan. The newly joined member is, of course, Grace, but let it suffice to say she's not going without a fight. The majority of critics love this sly and subversive film, with Vulture proclaiming, the movie is a vicious, richly funny, and artfully brutal tale that places Weaving's performance as its gravitational center. Set in the dark underbelly of the Los Angeles art scene, Bliss follows the exploits of a struggling young painter who is clearly at the very end of her rope. This self-indulgent, self-destructive soul eagerly engulfs every drug under the sun in search of artistic inspiration. Well, she eventually finds her muse, but at a considerable cost. Aided by a seriously vampiric gal pal, she quickly spirals into a gruesome and gory nightmare of her own making. The results are thoroughly disgusting, but is it art? I don't know, something came over me and then it all just started pouring out of me. I don't even remember doing it. Bliss is a no-holds-barred assault on the senses, and in the best possible way. 
This film is so visually out there that it's just begging to become a future cult classic. The AV Club aptly writes that, Bliss approaches its aesthetic with a straight-faced intensity, pummeling the viewer with violent bursts of montage until you feel like maybe you might have been dosed somehow on your way into the theater. In Sweetheart, Kiersey Clemens plays a traumatized young woman who manages to survive a devastating shipwreck, only to wind up in another deadly situation. After washing ashore on a deserted island, she's left to her own devices with limited resources and must do whatever she can to survive. To make matters worse, a mysterious and malevolent creature seems to be on the loose. With a runtime under 90 minutes, Sweetheart is a brisk and brutal chiller that dazzled lots of critics. Vulture clearly loved the unconventional film, writing that, Sweetheart is an ingenious affair, a no-nonsense monster movie that uses its limitations effectively and tells its story cinematically. Over the years, we've seen more than a few horror films riffing on Frankenstein, but Depraved is really its own undead beast. If you've ever wanted to see a zombie shamble his way through New York nightlife, this film is for you, but you better have a strong stomach. The Mad Doctor in this case is an ex-army medic with a severe case of PTSD. His creation, Adam, is thoughtful and intelligent. It says a lot that this ungodly creature is probably the most empathetic character in the film. Rest assured, there's enough gore on display to satisfy even the most hardcore horror fans. But the best thing about Depraved is that it cuts way deeper than your average chiller. In my dreams from someone else. I owe you something like a normal life. No wonder the critical consensus on Rotten Tomatoes raves that Depraved jolts a familiar monster back to life with a potent blend of timely themes and old-school chills. Hagazusa a Heathen's Curse is anything but a mainstream horror film, but this full-throttle creep show really manages to get under your skin. In the 15th century Alps, a young woman has been deemed a witch by the townsfolk, and honestly, you might be able to see their point. She spends her days hopelessly alone, with only her infant child and her beloved goats there to keep her company. But when the townspeople turn against her in a violent manner, she descends into a state of hopeless madness. The results are both fascinating and repulsive. Hagazusa is beautifully shot without a doubt. More to the point, it features one of the most horrific finales in recent memory. So if you check it out, and you should, consider yourself warned. Neil Jordan's Greta is an outrageous and darkly campy thriller, but it certainly begins innocently enough. Chloe Grace Moretz plays Frances, a recent transplant to New York City who's struggling with the recent death of her mother. When she discovers a handbag left on the subway, she goes the extra mile to return it to its owner, the titular Greta, played with insidious relish by Isabella Huppert. Frances becomes fast friends with Greta, and to say that this French piano teacher is eccentric is the understatement of the century. Needless to say, the friendship quickly takes a turn for the severely sinister. People can't keep doing this to me. Rest assured, this is certainly not the buddy film of the decade, but it is delightfully twisted stuff. In its positive review, Slate commented that, Neil Jordan's depth control of pace and tone elevates Greta past mere gimmickry, resulting in a comic thriller whose goofy humor only compounds its mastery of suspense. Set in Mexico and focused squarely on the country's violent drug wars, the dark fantasy Tigers Are Not Afraid is certainly not for the faint of heart. At the center of the story is a little girl named Estrella, whose mother has suddenly disappeared with no explanation whatsoever. In the hopes of calming Estrella after gunshots are heard outside her school, a teacher gives her three pieces of chalk and tells her that they can grant her three wishes. As Estrella adjusts to her bizarre new life and falls in love with a roving league of fellow orphans, she starts to believe those three wishes might be entirely real. But make no mistake, this isn't some lofty exercise in magical realism. It's a bleak, unsparing, and totally terrifying film that critics absolutely adore. In its effusive review, Consequence of Sound proclaimed, The film is replete with unforgettable images, stellar performances all up and down the cast, and genuinely original and thoughtful revisions of expected tropes. Little Monsters dares to answer the burning question that's never far from our minds. What would happen if a bunch of kindergartners found themselves smack dab in the middle of a zombie outbreak during a field trip? In order to keep her kids from getting scared, a wholesome school teacher, played wonderfully by Lupita Nyong'o, tries to make the kids believe it's all just a fun game. It is a bit scary. What are we doing? We're scared. What's the song we can sing? Meanwhile, Josh Gad plays insufferable kids' show personality Teddy McGiggle, who soon falls victim to the outbreak and starts looking at children in a whole new way. Little Monsters proves that a horror film doesn't have to be deadly serious in order to be incredible. It's also been a huge hit with critics, currently boasting a 93% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. 
Any child of the 80s or 90s knows scary stories to tell in the dark. In this iconic and creepy series, author Alvin Schwartz gathered up the most eerie and unsettling short tales from the annals of urban legends and folklore. The film adaptation brings several of those stories to the silver screen in a way that will be frightening for children and adults alike. Some people believe if we repeat stories often enough, they become real. The consensus on Rotten Tomatoes speaks for itself, claiming that Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark opens a creepy gateway into horror for younger genre enthusiasts. This is a frightening and cleverly constructed horror film that delivers plenty of jump scares without going overboard. You've heard of a waking nightmare, right? Well, Ari Aster's Midsummer plays out more like a waking daydream, and the results are fantastically frightening. What time is it? 9 p.m. That can't be right, the sky is blue. The fact that many of the film's horror sequences unfold in broad daylight certainly doesn't shield the characters from the dangers at hand, far from it. This is Astor's follow-up to his 2018 debut, the instant classic Hereditary, and it involves a young shell-shocked woman named Danny. She's just endured a horrific family tragedy, and her aloof boyfriend Christian certainly isn't helping matters. In fact, he clearly wants out of the relationship. Things go from bad to worse when Danny tags along with Christian and his pompous, pseudo-intellectual group of friends who are heading off to a remote Swedish village. The occasion is an ultra-rare, ultra-mysterious midsummer festival. As we learn more about the eerie pagan rituals on display, the film lurches toward a druggy, deranged conclusion that puts even the Wicker Man to shame. This is folk horror at its finest. Jordan Peele's Get Out was an immediate sensation when it premiered in 2017, and rightfully so. Its blend of unconventional scares and arch social commentary was a brilliant balancing act, and the film is impossible to get out of your head once you've seen it. Well, Get Out certainly wasn't a fluke, as anyone who's seen Us can attest. The seemingly simple story involves a family that's being inexplicably tormented by their own evil doppelgangers during a summer vacation in Santa Cruz, California. What are you people? It's us. Of course, you should brace yourself for plenty of twists and turns along the way. The film was widely praised, with The New Yorker's Nathan Lane writing, Us is political filmmaking of the most spirited sort, and it sets up quite a fight. The Hydes come to visit the Jekylls, and the Jekylls hit back. Whom you cheer for in the long run is up to you. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite horror movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.